what do you consider to be an example of an underrated anime? It's a strange question to ask because it's so subjective. Your top pick for an overrated anime could easily be on someone's underrated list and vice versa. The criteria for either designation changes from person to person based on that person's taste and their emotional attachment to the property. Regardless of what you consider fits your personal criteria, every anime fan has that one anime they'd recommend to their peers because they'd consider it to be a criminally underrated. For me, the automatic knee-jerk reaction is the recommendation of Detective Conan. Detective Conan, known to American audiences as his Case Closed, was written and directed by Gosho Aoyama and follows the life of teen prodigy Jimmy Kudo. I'll be using the English dub names of the characters for simplicity's sake, so bear with me. Jimmy is an amateur detective that's made a name for himself by helping the police solve seemingly unsolvable cases. While investigating a criminal exchange between two parties, Jimmy is attacked from behind and administered a poison that is meant to kill him. Instead of dying, Jimmy transforms into a child and takes on the pseudonym of Conan Edogawa, with Conan being a direct reference to Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who penned the Sherlock Holmes tales. In order to pursue the criminals that transformed him and hopefully secure an antidote, Conan takes up residence with his lifelong friend Rachel and her father Richard, who is also a detective. His reasoning is that if he can help Richard solve cases to boost the agency's reputation, eventually it'll lead to a case directly related to those who's turned his life upside down. However, neither Rachel nor Richard are aware of who he truly is, as exposing them to the truth invites danger to their doorstep. To achieve his goals without anyone suspecting his true identity, Conan is given several neat tools that allow him to solve cases as they arise. His two biggest tools being his watch that comes equipped with a tranquilizer dart, and a bow tie that allows him to change his voice. He uses these two in combination with each other, often sedating Richard and using his voice to solve crimes as they unfold. To compensate for the lack of physical strength of his child form, Conan also sports a pair of shoes that use electrical currents to stimulate his muscles and add some much needed power to his kicks. A solar powered skateboard affords him the mean to chase down criminals or get from point A to point B within strict deadlines should the need arise. Last but not least, the glasses Conan wears doubled not only as part of his disguise, since without them Rachel notes how he looks just like Jimmy, but they also serve as a way to track targets through one of the lenses, and as a way to listen in on targets through a detachable piece he can place at a site of his choosing. As a kid, I was instantly fascinated by all of his gadgets and definitely wanted them for myself, especially that friggin' skateboard. The premise by itself is interesting enough, but the first time I saw the show in Adult Swim, I had no idea what exactly the circumstances of this kid detective were. The very first episode I saw, the episode that had me hooked right out the gate, was the Moonlight Sonata Murder Case Part 1, which is episode 11. Regardless, I was so drawn in that I didn't care I wasn't seeing the series from the beginning. Detective Conan operates in much the same way as a police procedural like Law & Order or NCIS. There's a crime, there's an investigation, there's a deduction, and then there's a resolution. Each case is its own self-contained story, with a proper beginning, middle, and end, while periodically pushing the main plot forward inch by inch. One of the big draws of Detective Conan is the way it frames each crime and gives the audience the clues necessary to solve the crimes themselves before Conan does. Usually. Sometimes the jumps from A to B can be kind of absurd to the point there's no way a viewer could put it together. For the most part though, it presents the clues you need to arrive at logical conclusions which becomes part of the fun of watching. My cousin and I used to record the episodes on our DVR and pause right before Conan's deduction would begin. We'd talk over the case and clues like we were really detectives too. Then we'd unpause the show and see if we were right. We were often wrong more times than right, but it was fun either way. Detective Conan keeps its core cast very small while allowing supporting characters to have their moments as well. The core cast, in my opinion, consists of Jimmy slash Conan, Rachel, who doubles as both Jimmy's love interest and the emotional core of his driving force, Richard, a bumbling idiot who can't seem to solve a single case without Conan's influence, and Inspector McGuire. I know some people don't consider McGuire a core member of the cast, but he's Conan's direct line to the police, so I count him. The supporting characters typically consist of the Junior Detective League, Amy, Mitch, and George, classmates of Conan's who you'll either find adorably charming, or easily the worst part of any episode they're in. I understand their inclusion given the manga's demographic was children, but that doesn't make them any less annoying. I extend the umbrella of supporting roles to the one-off characters tied to each individual case as well. While there are some cases in which none of the characters really stand out, there are others in which I honestly feel for the men and women involved. It really just depends on the crime and the motivations written around it. Slowly but surely, each character reveals their personal sense of morality through their actions, and tiny bits of dialogue here and there. There are no shortage of criminals for Jimmy to stand as a stark contrast to, but in that same vein, through his interactions with the people he intends to outwit, 
he is sometimes faced with the moral gray areas that force otherwise innocent people to commit heinous acts of violence. On the flip side, in his social life, Jimmy has to navigate the maze of lies he weaves with good intentions in order to keep Rachel in the dark. Yet, he has to witness firsthand how his perceived absence affects the woman he loves. It's a nuanced game of mental tug of war for Jimmy that is always interesting to watch. Another big draw to the anime that sets it apart from plenty of its peers is the musical pieces composed by Katsuo Ono. All of the music in the series has a jazzy feel to it, amplifying the noir-like nature of the series as a whole. The distinct saxophone and deep bass lines in just about every tune carries the tone of whatever scene it's used for, influencing your emotional response whether you know it or not. You quickly come to recognize which songs are meant for moments of triumph, which are meant for moments of suspicion and distrust, which are meant for feelings of sorrow or guilt, and so on. Unlike a lot of anime, these songs are drilled into you nearly every episode without ever feeling stale or overused. The OST for Detective Conan is easily one of my favorites of any anime I've ever seen. There was even a point in which the Japanese army band covered the main theme, which was both surprising and incredibly cool to see. I got goosebumps from the wave of nostalgia that hit me during the performance. While I wholeheartedly endorse watching Detective Conan, there are a few issues that I need to address. Omitting them wouldn't be fair to those who do decide to check it out for themselves. First, we need to discuss the monstrous length of this classic anime. Detective Conan is being adapted from a 96 volume run that began back in 1994. The manga sales have exceeded 230 million copies sold worldwide, making it the fourth best-selling manga series. That's immensely impressive, yeah, but how does that translate in total length to an animation? Detective Conan, as of September 28th, 2019, will have 955 episodes. And it's still ongoing! That's an obscene number of episodes to tackle from the very beginning, which forces it into a similar category as something like One Piece, where the episode count can be something of a deterrent. The time commitment required to watch something like Detective Conan is insane, but the show also suffers from another issue that One Piece doesn't. And I only say it suffers in relation to those who will consider this a massive flaw. The very thing that gives Detective Conan its charm, the individual cases, also acts as a double-edged sword in terms of overall narrative. While there is a reason for it, being Conan is trying to boost Richard's reputation to real and bigger cases, it does slow down the main plot to a ridiculous crawl. The show can't focus on Jimmy's quest to get his original body back and on the police procedural angle simultaneously. At least, not frequently. The A plot takes a backseat to the B plot for long stretches, periodically referencing it or giving Jimmy another thread to tug on. For a lot of viewers, this will be a massive turnoff. Detective Conan follows the same kind of formula as a show like House, where the intrigue lies squarely in whatever disease House is trying to figure out that week, while the main narrative slowly unfolds in the background. This, however, allows anyone to fall into the series at nearly any point and enjoy themselves with standalone cases. But I can see how this kind of storytelling would turn away newcomers given that we live in an age where people want to see constant plot and character development. Slow burns are still appreciated, but I can understand how some people may come to the conclusion that Detective Conan burns a little too slow. The last issue that I think would come up really depends on which language you prefer to watch your anime. I go back and forth depending on the title. For me there are some anime that I just like more in English, such as Full Metal Alchemist, Yu Yu Hakusho, Cowboy Bebop, and of course Detective Conan. So naturally, when I decided to jump back into the series recently, I wanted to start from the beginning and watch it in order. But when I reached episode 131 of the English dub, something weird happened. The entire voice cast changed, which was so jarring that I skipped ahead only to find things hadn't gone back to normal. Turns out that after episode 130, Funimation stopped dubbing the show due to poor ratings and sales in North America. Detective Conan didn't exactly have a primetime slot, and it was likely incredibly difficult to sell a company like Cartoon Network on the idea of a murder mystery show given the average age of the network's audience. So, seeing the property as dead in the water, all official efforts to dub the show were completely abandoned with no desire to breathe new life into it. A group known as the Detective Conan Translation Project took it upon themselves to fan dub the show to the best of their ability moving forward, and they got quite a bit done too. Not enough to make a huge difference, nor was it of the best quality, but god bless them they tried. The worst part about Funimation cancelling the dub was that they were only 6 episodes out from a massive plot heavy 2 hour special that shifts the status quo just enough to add another organic layer of intrigue. 
hell, they even dubbed some of the movies which take place after this massive plot twist. If you watch the dub up to this point, you don't really have a choice but to switch to the English sub, which will strangely move you backward from episode 131 to episode 124, because Japan was sometimes released episodes as 45 minute specials, whereas American syndication was ironclad in time slots, which forced some episodes to be chopped in half. Detective Conan is something of an anomaly in the anime industry. It's been running so long that it's simultaneously considered a classic and a staple of the anime world, even if it doesn't get the same recognition as its peers. Detective Conan spawned 23 films, one of which released as recently as April 2019. The feature films consistently perform well in the Japanese box office time and again. Hell, when Infinity War hit Japan, it actually sold 16,000 fewer tickets than Conan's 22nd film, which was in its third weekend at the box office. Aside from films, our pint-sized detective has also spawned 24 video games, a spin-off special with Lupin the Third, four live-action TV drama specials, and even a live-action series that ran from July 2011 to September 2011. There's a reason Detective Conan has survived so long in the hearts of so many, despite Western audiences unceremoniously ignoring it for the most part. I don't think enough anime fans give it a chance, which is a crying shame. I don't need to tell most fans of anime to watch things like Full Metal or Wolf's Rain or Trigun or Cowboy Bebop, but after revisiting the series myself, I believe I would be doing a disservice if I didn't advocate for Detective Conan, a criminally underrated anime. Thanks for watching.